as soon as I finished the race, of course I finished, I was just like vomiting, just constantly. I just, like when you guys wanted to do the awards, like the oh. podium ceremony, I was like, I can't, I'm gonna vomit over everybody. And I literally can't. <laughs> Jasper, Jasper, Steve! Steve! Yeah. how are you? We just went for a run and actually uh. um, we got chased by, chased by cows, so he's really tired and emotionally drained. The only time ever I was chased by a cow was in the UK. <laughs> it's really uh. scary. I'm like terrified. Probably the fastest I've run in like a year, running away from those cows, <laughs> just getting Jasper to run away. But like, how, how does it? feel the, the uncertainty that being unemployed and not knowing what's going to happen. Yeah, it's really weird. I mean, I go through highs and lows, to be honest. Because like, there's, been, there's been loads of times where I woke up in the morning, you're in the middle of a big training block, and you're just like, you roll over and you're just like, oh, I'm so, my body is absolutely smashed. I'm so broken. And I just wish I could stay in bed. Then now it's like, well, actually, if I wanted to stay in bed, the implications aren't going to be that big. But now I've got it. I actually don't want it. So <laughs> I, want, I want to get back to normal. Yeah, it's quite, um, I found it quite a roller coaster of feelings because for me, I was in South Africa already, ready to race in two weeks. I had I sort of got into really good shape for South Africa and I was two weeks away. And then it got cooled off two weeks before and I had to sort of rush home and sort of I was on the I was on the last flight back to the UK from South Africa. So and I'm glad I am because South Africa is like in a complete lockdown. Like they're not even allowed to take their dogs for a walk. It's crazy. That's, that's worse than you, isn't it? We are allowed to walk the dog, that's it, yeah. I've seen the most amazing thing. Like the, the Spanish are really creative. So um, the police call it a walking tree. So the guy literally disguising himself as a tree out there. And in the first days, they tried everything. They walked their, their um, goats. A guy on Lance Roddy, this is not a joke, walked his turtle. Put, put the tur <laughs> <laughs> turtle on the leash, started walking. I saw you went on Zwift the other day, though. After, I have given in after 19 days. I literally set up my turbo room on day one and successfully ignored it for 18 days. <laughs> <laughs> it's not my thing but you're on it now as well i am do you know what so i i, I always do mega sessions in the turbo and i've always i've always had a zwift account but i sort of used it i haven't really understood it i've sort of ridden along and i'm like well i don't really want to ride along next to people because i'm doing a different session and like then I just look like an idiot if I'm doing something like microverse and I'm sort of sort of doing like some sprints. You just like look like an idiot that's trying to overtake someone. I, I hate that. So I've always sort of stayed away from it. But then, like last week, I did a bit of racing, and that's fun. That's really fun. Like we did. Um, we did. We actually had a really good team. We broke the record. It was me. Do you remember Lucy Gossage? Yeah. Um, Lucy Charles, Nikki Bartlett, Kat Rye, um, Paris Edwards, and a cyclist called Laura Massey. But yeah, so it was good. It was good. And, it, and then we had each other on like earphones, so you could hear, we could all hear all six of us. I probably sound like such a granny now, because like apparently that's just normal. But yeah, we had each other on it. We were like every time like someone would take a turn on the front. And then be like, oh, I'm blowing. And yeah, it was really cool, really fun. When you say you got your ups and downs, what is it that, that worries you? Is it more that you just miss racing? Or are you worried about not doing enough for the sponsors? Are you worried about income? Like, wh what are the worries when you're having your downs? I've never known what it's like to lose a job. And it does feel a bit like that. Like, to be unemployed, it's sort of like, I never thought I'd be unemployed. And, you know, I've got some good sponsors that still support me and that's great but you know it's it's a substantial cut to, to my income especially when I got to the stage where I was two weeks away from racing it's sort of like you've done you've done like eight months of six eight months of work for that one race and then it's like if you go to you've done all the work you've just got to show it and that's 
that's a professional athlete. That's how it works for professional athletes earning their income. And it's like, well, then that's taken away from you two weeks before. So I find that really emotionally hard to like deal with. And like a lot of my self worth comes from, you know, performing as a triathlete. And I had, um, I had a bad race at the, at the end of the year. I got really sick and. Again, I was really fit, and the week before, I was like in bed for the whole week and did a, a twenty-minute ride the day before the race to check my bike was all apart because I built it when I was ill, and then I had to pull out just after, like after I don't know five k's of the run. So I was ready for South Africa to sort of to show that fitness that I had sort of a few months before that, and then I get away. So it's just it's that sort of self-esteem that you get from from just performing it's you know it's, it's what it's what i love like we're incredibly lucky that we get to do our hobby for a career um but when it gets taken away it's sort of it's almost worse because you've got your hobbies being taken away and your careers being taken away and you know it takes so much of your time to train for triathlon that it's like you don't have to of other hobbies it's like you can't do other sports while you're doing triathlon you can't have other hobbies because triathlon just takes 100 percent of your time if you're not training you're too tired to do stuff and if you're not training you're shopping for food and you're cooking something healthy or you know it's 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 a 24 7 job which is amazing and you know it's such a privilege to be able to do it but it's when it gets taken away it's like you're your whole day is like, it's, you know, it's not like I'm not training, but I, some people can sustain that level of training when they don't have a goal. But like, I think, you know, if I had sustained the level of training that I was doing going into South Africa, I like mentally and physically, I just blow up halfway through the year. What do you do when you have the lows? Like, do you just let them happen or do you give anything, any, any, techniques any any triggers anything to to work with it or ah do you know what this i just try and focus on the on the good stuff it's sort of the lows will happen and i'm sure you know in triathlon we're not the only people unemployed i mean there's airline staff there's businesses going bus left right and center so you know it's like anyone else in probably in a similar position it's like there's so many great things going on in the world and you know, I think, I think this, this virus has shown that there's so much good in the world as well. Like this, you know, all the companies that are helping make masks, helping make various kinds of ventilated and protective equipment is amazing. I feel, you know, like it's incredible how people have pulled together and Rob, my husband's in the army and within like a few days the army had built a 4,000 person hospital in London and it's like that sort of stuff's like it's quite impressive and like it's that sort of thing that I think it's it's um yeah I think that stuff's really good to focus on and see the positive that's that's come out of it yeah I feel like more people are saying are talking to people even though they should <laughs> almost like it's the worst time for it but <laughs> The, the, when you go out when I go out for my run like the I feel like the spirit's quite high and there's a lot of people sort of almost seem quite happy like talking to each other like supporting each other which is quite cool yeah no it's really nice to see like we, we've got the same here um you appreciate suddenly talking to someone you're not yeah. in a rush anymore <laughs> <laughs> You know, they don't keep you from anything. Um, yeah. No, definitely. Yeah. It's funny, and that's the thing. I think, like, you put it, you put it exactly right there. It's like people, you're not keeping anyone. No one's got anything better to be at. So it's like no one's, every, the world's slowed down. So everyone's just got a bit more time for each other than they used to. And it's like, it's, that's quite nice. I think this, the world slowing down is quite nice. And I hope that we can take something from it. And just try to give people more time in the future. Like we have, um, we have tea every week with our, we've got an ex neighbor, he's like 90. And he, he lives like over the road, but his house backs onto the road and then ours. So we have like tea once a week with him. Um, obviously like 
with the road. We're not breaking the rules. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that's amazing. That's beautiful. Yeah, so it's cool. Um, and that spirit and that slowing down, I think it would be nice if we kept something of that. You've got to have like a, a party trick. Oh, I can actually do that Holly Lawrence one. The one where you like make your belly like... Oh! Like, I still think your best party trick is, is Rob. You know what my last memory of Rob is, right? Oh, I have in Hamburg, probably. Oh no. <laughs> yeah, you, uh, you sure you have one of the best cheer squads out there at your races, I have to say. <laughs> what was your memory of Rob? Is it even repeatable? <laughs> it's repeatable, but you had a friend there as well. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. My friend. <laughs> and they were very um, happy at, at what, by the time you came, came down the chute to take the win, yeah. Yeah, I made the mistake of getting them VIP passes and <laughs> <laughs> I they were really good supporters, but um, I don't know if they knew whether it was me that they were cheering or someone else. And I do strongly believe you joined the party by then. <laughs> do you know what I did? And that was the worst. Do you remember what a state I was when I crossed the finish line? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I, I, um, I was, ah, oh, that race. I don't know what it was, but the second half of that race, I just don't think I quite got my nutrition right. I, I think I might have, believe it or not, eaten too much on, on the bike. And I've never had it before, but like the second half of the run, it's just like, I don't feel good. I really don't feel good. And I was just feeling really like nauseous. And I was just like, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. It's a feeling I've never had before. As soon as I finished the race, I crossed the finish. I was just like vomiting, just constantly. I just like when you guys wanted to do the awards, like the oh. podium ceremony. I was like, huh? I'm gonna vomit over everybody. And I literally can't. <laughs> I get back to the finish line where my friends were still drinking and Rob was still drinking, and they were like, yeah, yeah, yeah we, need to, we need to get you some. Champagne and it's like yeah, champagne for everybody and <laughs> I I literally just vomited and then I start drinking champagne. This is probably like an hour after the race. Start drinking champagne and then I'm like, oh, I'm not feeling so good again. <laughs> and the VIP area was like right on the street, <laughs> so I just had a, like one glass of champagne and then I had to run out of the VIP area on the pavement in the middle. Of middle of Hamburg on like Sunday afternoon vomiting in the gutter and like there was Germans walking past like tutting at me and like, like like just these Brits the Brits just come to Germany and they just vomit in gutter and stuff <laughs>